Hydrator. It's the 23rd of September, 2024. It's been a rough few months. Long-term subscribers will know I used to title each year with a theme, and this year's theme has certainly got to be the Year of Pain. On the 16th of January, 2024, my father, Partha Shrati Das, passed away. I've made a dedicated video of his life and be grateful if you watched it, it'll be linked wherever YouTube allows me to do so. But he went out on relatively good terms. In December of 2023, he went to India to visit his family and his old friends. Then in early January, he visited my sister in Dubai. He landed back on the 15th of January, I ordered him an Uber home from Heathrow Airport. I was going to visit him on the 16th for his 68th birthday, but on Tuesdays I teach kickboxing classes in the evening, so I was going to go after that. But my mum calls me at approximately 5.30pm before those classes, saying he has had a heart attack. I, of course, rush home, the paramedics are already there, attempting to do mechanical CPR. But I hold his hand as they take that machinery away. It was surreal. He was eating some food that my mum had prepared for him, and literally he was mid text responding to one of his friends messaging him happy birthday effectively he was here one second and the next he wasn't the following few weeks were largely a blur my sister flew back the next day a lot of family friends came over to console us and of course there were the funeral arrangements in particular i'd like to thank oral shonji and Shomik, who helped me a lot with those arrangements, but in general were a rock-solid support for me and my family. After the funeral, there was a bunch of admin to get through, that's with the will, the inheritance, and silly things like transferring the utility bill to a different payer. It's remarkable how archaic some of these systems are given it's 2024. You download a form online, print it, physically fill it in and post it, or you have to physically go to a branch to sort things out. It's, it's a bit of a mess, but thankfully the majority of that stuff is done. At first I was actually angry, both at myself and him. Since the pandemic and his retirement, he wasn't being very health conscious, wasn't exercising much, wasn't eating healthily and South Asians are statistically very likely to have cardiovascular disease so really we should have taken more care of him or he should have taken more care of himself really he was an adult he raised me of course and there's only so much you can force someone to do but it is what it is I guess I just have to make sure I don't make those mistakes myself then it's just been and sorrow unrelentingly it's got better i guess i still feel sad in in waves every day um, recording this video i'm effectively holding back tears it's it's like losing a part of you um, yeah it's just hard i'm not sad that he's not here I don't really think I've even processed that part yet. It feels more like he's on some extended holiday. But I'm more sad that he won't see the major landmarks in my life. He won't see me complete my PhD or the successes I'll have in my career or having a family, a wife, children, his grandchildren, things he would have been overjoyed to experience. He won't ever be able to see the the fruits of his labour that him and my mum laid down for me and my sister. That's 
what I'm most sad about. Our father-son relationship was very good. I touched on it in the eulogy video, but after I moved back home in 2018 and throughout the pandemic, we got very close. And even after I moved out, I would come back home at least once a week to have a chat. I remember the precise moment I realised the importance of family and friends, and that was while editing the 22 video where I was creating a montage of my life up to that point, and it really solidified um, those relationships and how important they are, and since then I've made an active choice in cherishing those relationships and putting effort into them. So no regrets on that part. We left on very good terms. The last thing I said to him was happy birthday. You can't really go out better than that. So I guess I've just got to live my life in a way that would make him proud and be as good of a father to my children as he was to me. It's like that moment in The Lion King, he lives through me. It is Wednesday the 6th of March and you just got your wisdom tooth out. It is Wednesday the 24th of April, you just come out of your meniscus repair surgery in your right knee, walking on crutches and yeah, we'll be bed bound for the next couple of weeks. Let's see how it progresses. I've attended every one of the doctor's appointments, the weekly physio appointments, doing all of the recommended exercises, cycling on an exercise bike almost every day and for the past few weeks doing leg weight training again my right leg deflated by about 50 percent due to muscle atrophy but some of that strength is coming back now. overall it's okay i can walk as normal and my flexibility is back to normal too I'll say the majority of the time it's back to how it was pre-injury, but some days it's quite bad and it's worse than it was before the surgery. They say it takes about 9 to 12 months to heal or know whether you have healed, so it's a waiting game. I've also done a bunch of awesome stuff over the last 9 months too, but I'll have a dedicated video for that since this video is long enough as it is. See you then, Adrito.